Hey there, welcome to day 149 of our BU 365 day challenge to do one thing every day that improves us, improves you, improves me, helps us to move toward becoming a better version of ourselves a little tiny bit every single day. Now we've been focusing on the area of financial well-being. FWB stands for financial well-being. And how does that interact with all of the other areas of the life framework? I didn't grab the life framework, but let's grab it quickly. Physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial relationships, contribution, confidence, and communication. Those are the life framework nine, the nine components of the life framework. And what we want to look at and think about today is how do how does our financial well-being interact with each of those areas and aspects of our life? Because scientists have done tons of studies on this and they have found that our financial well-being, our financial health, how we feel about our finances, how we what we think about our finances has a huge impact on all the areas and aspects of our life, all of them. So how much does it impact each of the different areas and aspects of your life? I'm going to share a couple things about that in different areas. And then what we're going to do today is I created this little grid for myself and you can choose to do it however you want. But I wrote down each of the different areas and aspects, the nine areas, and then positive Neg neutral or negative and then a word or two or draw a little picture that reminds you of where you're at right now or whether you're having a positive or negative impact where your finances are on each of these different areas of your life and then we're going to share just one the area that we think is having the finances has the biggest impact on our life right now and Maybe if it's having a negative impact, that's an area we want to work on. But if it's having a super positive impact, that's something we want to build and grow on. So that's how I'm going to do it. So today, just think about the different areas and aspects of your life. And then share the one area that you think has got the strongest interaction for you. Uh, they've done a whole lot of scientists and uh, people have done a lot of different studies on areas and aspects of our, our financial well-being and how that impacts our health, our mental health. And I'm just going to read a list of some of the things that they found are directly linked to how we think and how we feel about our finances and what our financial situation is. And um, then I'll share seven pitfalls or money mistakes. And I've probably shared something similar to this before, but just to remind us that if we're doing these things, it may or may not be negatively impacting our finances. And then, uh, with respect to relationships, because I think that uh, if I look back on one of the biggest impacts and, and factors in my divorce, it had to do with money and our disagreements and arguments and <clears throat> different ways of looking at money and finances and bills and spending and what was and wasn't necessary. I mean, every single holiday, I like to go all in for the kids. My ex-husband was a minimalist and thought they should get like one present for Christmas, which was the exact opposite of what I believed in growing and experienced growing up. So it wasn't the way I wanted to do Christmas or holidays. And so that was always a bone of contention. So it definitely impacted my relationships in the past. So um, importance of mental health. Let's start there on financial stress, anxiety. And scientists have found that 68% of Americans suffer from some sort of anxiety with respect to money and their finances. Headaches, migraines, uh, compromised immune system, digestive issues, high blood pressure, muscle tension, heart arrhythmia, depression, and feelings of being overwhelmed have all been directly linked to experiences with our financial well-being, our financial health. Uh, and Forbes, actually, I thought this was fascinating, estimates that 71% of Americans struggle with money to a certain extent, to some extent, they struggle with finances or financial well-being. That is a frightening, staggering number of people. That's at least 178 million people in our country, almost one in or almost three in four, right? It's definitely over half, 71%. It's almost 75. That's a lot of people. So three out of four people that you see in some way, shape or form struggle with money or their financial well-being. That to me was mind boggling. Uh, but guess what? I've struggled with my finances and my my money situation often in the past, right? It's like anything else in our life. It ebbs and flows. Uh, and again, then with respect to relationships, our other aspects of uh, or effects of thoughts and feelings and doubts and fears and worries about money 
arguing about money reduces our relationships. Difficulty sleeping. Have you ever lost sleep over an expense, an accident, a bill, uh, worrying that you weren't going to be able to make rent or your house payment? Uh, that would be an example of losing sleep. I lost sleep when I was building certain businesses many nights. Uh, feeling angry or fearful, mood swings, tiredness, muscle pain, loss of appetite, uh, lower sex drive, withdrawal from other people. And what I thought was interesting is scientists have actually found that it can cause loss of appetite, but it can also cause over-reliance on drugs, alcohol, and overeating. So you can either, and, and I've seen this in my life, you can either lose weight or you can gain weight based on your stress in any area or aspect of your life. But with respect to money, they've done studies on it. So what are some things and mistakes that we make with our money? I think we've talked about these before, but let's run over them quickly again to help remind us how money and finances and our financial well-being impacts the other areas and aspects of our life. So seven pitfalls or money mistakes that we want to try to avoid. Um, not saving any money. Not having any money in case life happens. And guess what? Life happens to all of us. So we always want to have a little bit of a cushion so that we aren't fearful. We aren't stressed out about, well, what happens if I break my windshield and I don't have windshield insurance, right? Um, I don't know why I thought of that example. I haven't driven for a couple of years. Number two, uh, having no investment plan. Having no plan, no thought of um, how we're spending. Again, I think we've shared before, and it's not on this list, but not paying yourself first, not making sure that you are taking care of yourself before you worry about all the other things that, that we want money to, to buy for us or, or do for us. Uh, acquiring unsustainable debt. This is probably, and then number four, overspending. <clears throat> Those two probably are the root cause of the 71% of people in America feeling like they're struggling with money in some way, shape, or form. Uh, not having a financial plan, meaning not not even thinking about it, not budgeting, not having a plan. Just, you know, you make your money, you spend your money. You make your money, you spend your money. And when you do that, guess what? You make and spend all your money, usually in the period of time that you have available. Uh, I've experienced that. I remember in, in corporate America out of college, my first job, I went from earning money when I was working weekly to I got paid monthly. I was on salary and we got paid once a month, so every 30 days. Well, by the time about two and a half weeks into the month, I was out of money with the house payment, the car payment, the utilities, and then food, a little bit of food. I usually ran out of money about the two and a half, three week mark. And so that last week was a struggle. And I was definitely wondering, all right, what am I going to do this? Luckily, I would make sure I had the car filled with gas so I could get to and from work. But it was a challenge. Um, and then I just had to learn how to stretch out my money and, and find ways to save and plan and budget versus running out of money. But I remember those fearful months when it just hit me that, oh my gosh, I'm out of money and I'm not going to get a check this Friday. Uh, not having health insurance. Uh, and then finally, not seeking professional help or assistance when necessary, right? It is so easy to just cocoon and stay in our little bubble and think everything is going to be fine when sometimes we just need to ask for help. Help from people that have been through the experience before. Help from experts. And again, we've talked about doing our due diligence and choosing expert wisely because there are literally hundreds of thousands of financial planners out in the world that we could go to to learn from, but they're not all experts, right? We have to look at what is their track record, what kind of success have they been having. And if they're not financially successful in achieving their goals and objectives, please don't take advice from them. Uh, so our action item again today, I, like I said, I made myself this little grid with all the nine areas and then plus, minus, neutral. And I want to write down a word or something that describes where I'm at right now with that. And then I will figure out which area or aspect of my life is being most impacted by my financial well-being or lack of well-being and share that in the comments below and that's what i'm asking you to do today too great topic really important uh and uh i'll be with you tomorrow any questions ask please just hit me up otherwise have an awesome day it is sunday in my neck of the woods and a holiday weekend so that means tomorrow is a holiday for everyone all right have a great day bye